So this is my response for the reflection portion of this reflection assignment. So the first question that we are supposed to respond to on an individual basis was about the resources and experiences that we have gained from this class. And I, I've honestly learned a lot through the course of this class. Um, probably one of the most rewarding and poignant experiences has been working collaboratively with Tana, who I did this project with. Um, you know, before this, group projects have always kind of been a letdown, and it, it makes me nervous to, in the future, work with other people since there is kind of that flaky nature to group projects. But working with Tana has been wonderful. You know, I've really seen the benefit of having another point of view, like, inserted into your work and making you think a different way and kind of expanding your worldview, or at least your worldview in relation to teaching. And so it's really made me look forward to that aspect of teaching, of having that collaborative experience and being able to learn from other people. And knowing that, you know, as I get further into the education um, department, that hopefully I'll be able to experience more of these kind of partnerships where you know, people who are serious about education and are serious about teaching and learning will most likely have more of an investment in group projects and partnership work. So I think that was one really rewarding experience that I had throughout this class. Um, another was with the lesson planning. I mean, I know necessarily we only did one official lesson plan, but even the standards assignment before that and the assessment portion that we're working on now, um, I found very helpful because that's one aspect of teaching that has always been a little intimidating for me because, you know, it's just, I've always had those big questions of how do you know how many lessons to plan for a day? You know, how much instruction time do you need to allow to complete a lesson? How many lessons do you need for an entire week? And so I had all these big questions, but this is my first very meaningful experience with lesson planning, and it doesn't seem as intimidating after going through the process of writing a lesson plan. So I really appreciate that aspect of it, of having the experience of planning, and knowing that the more work that goes into the actual lesson planning means that there's a smoother ride throughout the actual school day which I really appreciate because, you know, your students, you don't know how they're going to act. You don't know what's going to go on in the classroom. You don't know what they're going to bring to the table. But the one thing as a teacher that we can do is we can be prepared and we can know exactly what we want to do in our lesson. So that was a really rewarding experience as well. Um, and then as far as resources, the resources I found most helpful were the ones about Bloom's Taxonomy because that was always one aspect of um, lesson planning that I, I didn't know how exact to be. I didn't know exactly what, was, what people were looking for in the creation of learning objectives because, you know, I always thought time. I was like, okay, do I need to be saying the students need to learn this lesson or, like, accomplish the standard in two days? You know, as far as measurable, do I need to say... I, I need at least four concrete ideas of this one concept. And so it was just really nice to be able to go through that and kind of see what exactly is needed to create a standard. But then in terms of Bloom's taxonomy, of being able to understand the building process to get to that higher level thinking and those higher level activities, because it seemed kind of crazy to have a lesson that got all the way up to the tippity top of Bloom's Taxonomy's Pyramid. Um, but, you know, for our standards assignment, the first idea we had about, you know, the creating the props and doing a, a presentation on how, those, how they found those props within their story, you know, that was one of our first ideas, and that automatically reached up to the top um, order of thinking in Bloom's taxonomy. 
So I definitely made those resources made accomplishing that that much easier and that much less anxiety um, feeling, <laughs> which was nice. So those are resources that I really appreciated. And then as far as my favorite topic covered in the course, um, it wasn't my favorite, but it was definitely what I needed the most with. And that was about working with standards and creating learning objectives. Because as I said, um, I did have a lot of anxiety about what constituted a good learning objective and, um, you know, how exactly do you create a learning objective that accomplishes a standard. But, you know, throughout the process of creating these assignments, you know, I realized that you're not going to accomplish a learning standard like an academic standard in one lesson. You know, that's not po not entirely possible. And so kind of having that realization was really comforting, but then also having the practice of creating a lear learning objective and getting feedback on that learning objective was really helpful. So in consequence, it was maybe it wasn't my most favorite topic, but it was one that I really got the most out of it and it helped make it more of my favorite. But my favorite topic was probably the death by PowerPoint. Um, I thought that was really interesting as far as the information that was presented. I tend to be the kind of person who want, wants to splash all sorts of graphics, wants to use different fonts. You know, I've, I've learned to use readable fonts after taking EDN 319 and you know, wanting to make the material accessible to students with, you know, all, all different learning disabilities. But I always tended to overcrowd my PowerPoints. And so, you know, after kind of going through that material, it made it a lot easier for me to see the benefits of not overloading all my slides of simplicity. And so I thought that was a, probably one of my favorite topics. And then as, as far as what was my favorite assigned reading from the semester and how it will impact my future teaching career, I really appreciated chapter 10 from the textbook. Um, I liked that it went into like inquiry-based instruction. I, I think that's such a powerful tool. Um, you know, if we want our students to really think in higher in higher ways that are that are going to help get them jobs in today's very creatively demanding um, work atmosphere, then we need to help get them thinking about those big questions. We don't want them to be intimidated by thinking outside of the box and trying to figure out answers to questions people don't know. We want to encourage that. You know, I was reading for another class the other day about a book. They were, they, a class I was reading the book, um, All About a Million. And they talked about how the students in first grade, they're like, I wonder if we have anything in our classroom that has a million. And the students started working and they said, there's probably a million loops in our carpet. And so they devised a way to figure out how many loops were in like a certain area and then figure out how many loops were in the entire carpet. And so... Like, I think, like, fostering that kind of interactive and question-based curriculum is a great way to get our students thinking in higher ways. And so that's what I want to do. You know, I want students who are going to think creatively and be able to, aren't going to be afraid to answer those big questions that they know it's not all about um, the it's not all about getting it right, but sometimes it's about the process. And so in my future classroom, I really want to make sure that I'm asking probing questions, that I'm encouraging the students to ask their own questions about what we're learning. Because, you know, I, I'm not going to know everything, but, you know, I can promise my students that I'm going to do everything I can to provide them with the information they need to answer their questions, or at least point them in the direction for how they can help answer their own questions. So I loved chapter 10. And then about, uh, about my performance in this class, um, I'll start with areas for improvement because I like to end everything on a good note. But for the area of improvement, 
what I definitely feel I need to work on the most is working on my confidence. Um, when I'm talking with people, I can project a lot of confidence, but when it comes to things like assignments, turning in lesson plans, I tend to get very nervous and I tend to have a lot of self-doubt. And you know, I've, I've done well on the assignments that we've turned in. And so it's just, I think I need to work on building my confidence in the material I'm presenting because if I'm confident in the material and I know it's going to do its purpose, then, you know, it's going to make presenting the material to my students so much easier. So that's definitely one area I need to work on. Um, and I also need to work on um, just still working on Bloom's taxonomy and learning objectives and getting more comfortable um, with those areas. Because while they make more sense now, I definitely want to make sure that I can I feel confident quickly creating a learning objective and feeling like it's serving its purpose and it's usable and readable by everyone. Um, and also not like becoming more comfortable with Bloom's taxonomy so that then it's easier to apply that to the activities that I create for my classroom so that I'm not just strapping at the first two levels of Bloom taxonomy. That I'm always reaching to get my students to apply the learning, to create, and to encourage that higher level thinking that the inquiry based instruction um, encourages. Then, as far as the successes, um, one of the things I was really proud of was the standards assignment. Um, that was one of those situations where I was really nervous and not super confident about. Um, some of the ideas that we had come up with for the activity, but it was seriously probably the first idea that we had, um, and it turned out to be a great assignment, you know, and so, like, that was just a really great feeling to know that the material that we're thinking of and the way that I'm thinking and that Tana and I work together and are thinking towards is exactly where it needs to be. So that was definitely one of the successes. And I also think a success is the way Tana and I have worked together. You know, we've worked together on every assignment since the beginning of the summer session. And, you know, our quality of work has stayed the same. You know, we've supported each other. There have been weeks where she's done more. There have been weeks when I've done more. Because we recognize that we both have stuff going on outside of outside of class and we're there to support each other and make sure that we we're helping each other become the best that we can be and that we'll support each other when needed so that was also a big success um overall like i've really gotten a lot out of this class and um i've really appreciated everything that we've done